Hey guys, it's Ted Bogert. Welcome back to The Ted Show. You know how much I love the arts, anything to do with the arts. And today I'm super honored to have Stephen Schuster, better known as Schusty, on the show. He has a beautiful exhibit at the Mills Gallery Orlando uh, that cleans up, uh, ends, I guess is the word, uh, finishes up this week. And so it's such an honor when I'm able to have such talented artists on the show. So welcome, Schusty. How are you today? Thank you. Fine. Excited so to happy. be here. So happy to have you on the show. Um, I, before we went live, I said the audience absolutely loves to know an origin story, especially when it comes to the arts. They want to know if you were like immediately before you could speak, were you painting before? So they, they kind of want to know the journey. So can you share a little bit of that with them? Sure. I grew up in New Jersey and came to South Florida when I was um, a junior in high school. And um, I switched from science to art down here, the sunshine. <laughs> and um, I've been painting and drawing for my whole life. I love painting. My degree is in painting. My father said to me, I'm not allowed to get a degree in painting. And so I have a minor in architecture. Um, after going to college, I went to work for my father who came down to South Florida to buy a tiny business called Ding-a-Ling Answering Service. Ding-a-Ling Answering Service. Yep, it's old wooden switchboards. <laughs> and um, that was in the 1970s, 1980s. It was 1982 at the time. And around 1985, beepers came out, then 1988. Uh, 800 numbers came out and the entire career, my entire career and all of our mutual lives has been the convergence of computer telephony for the last 30 years. Yeah. And so I um, had the opportunity within the call center to understand, well, within the answering service to understand it. And so I decided to build a call center along with the family. And when I mean decided to build, I mean, I bought the equipment, learned the equipment without going to any classes and started to turn it into a call center. So then I had to write all the software and everything else you can imagine, which turned into a team of 35 engineers, a patent and software development and a company that grew from 10 people to a few thousand. That's a, that's amazing. And it's also very left brain, right? That's a, that's a. Tell me, because I, artists usually don't uh, have a story like that. You're you're yeah. talking about high level business, uh, engineering, phone systems. I mean, that's a that's different. I feel like, or explain why it's not different. Yeah, um, I think it's very similar. I think architecture is that way. I did. I was the only art student in my painting group to take calculus, and I aced calculus. Um, I. Uh, I don't see it that way. I really do see that the engineering and the painting go hand in hand. What I do on a daily basis is I, I've written 20 books and I paint and draw every single day. And so what I do is I try to intensely focus and then back up and be creative. And I go back and forth all day long doing that so that you can come back with a new sense of refreshment. And as long as I maintain the love that I put into it, then it works because I get the flow state. And frankly, that's the whole game. You get into the flow state, you're you're there. I, lo I love to talk to creatives like you because the, I, I'm, I'm not a creative in that sense. I can appreciate it, which is why I love the arts. Uh -huh. uh, but I love to hear the process. I love you talking about the flow. I think that's that's that is what... I feel like where the passion comes out, where you can actually hear it, it's palpable when you're talking about your passion, which is art. Tell us about your style. Um, do they talk about that anymore? You know, in college, we I went to the basic art class and we learned the different styles. Uh, but yeah. what would you consider your style? What would you say if somebody asked you? That? So I, I um, defy style. I've been beat up over style. <laughs> because I will switch gears as fast as I can think. Love that. And I love studying art. So I study art history. I love Northwest Indian art. I love Guatemalan art. 
I love every kind of art I ever touched. I'm interested in Japanese art and impressionism. And, and so I, um, I will copy many of the pieces I see, and then I'll try to take it into a new place. Lovely. Right. And so I want to use those styles. Um, yes. That Tell is. us about what I, what I, I love that because I think hmm? every time I've had an artist on, the newer, I call newer artists, the the ones who have just emerged and have are blessed to have shows, exhibits like you. They don't want to define themselves. They don't. They don't want to be put in uh, the traditional old school model of how people think of art. And so, kudos to you because I think that's good. You're expressing yourself. Um, and if you're an expressionist, a person who does that, you don't want to be pigeonholed into one. That's particular. true. Yeah. So tell us about the exhibit. Give us the 411, the details. Is it called an exhibit? Boris sometimes corrects me. So is it an exhibit? Is it a show? And then give them the details on yeah. uh, where it's happening and what's going on. Um, I don't get into the semantics of the exhibit or the show because <laughs> I don't know myself. But I, um, I built that company with my family and we sold it in 2019. And so I went back to my roots of doing the art and the writing and um, my father died along the way. And so I, I wrote his biography. I spent eight years on his biography. And I know I'm off subject. You, you're asking. No, me please. So I, I'm interested in all of it. Yeah. And so I, um, when I approached, let me start off. One of the things I do in the morning is I like to do warm up exercises. And I've been doing it for many years, and I do bugs for warm-up warm exercises. And as silly as they sound, when they're in watercolors, they're one thing. But when they're in vector art, which is my go-to, right, they are like precision-engineered jewelry. They are exquisite when I, when, when I deal with them. And I can do a bug in an hour, wow. maybe may, at most a day. But an hour or two is plenty for a buck. And so that warms me up and gets the juices flowing. And, uh, and for whatever reason, how silly I can be, I wrote a book, um, uh, let me step back for a sec. I wrote a book about the Nazi Holocaust. Wow. I know that's completely a whole different subject. Yeah, but I, that was the first book I ever wrote. And it taught me how to write. The survivor is still alive. The story is, is heart wrenching. And it's available on Amazon. And uh, anyhow, the reason is, I so, it, we have to talk about that at some point. We'll be we have to, to the reason I mention it though is I I write books. I wrote a book on bugs. Well, how can the same author who wrote this Holocaust book write a book on bugs? It's just silliness, right? And so I spoke to my editor. I said, editor, we have to make this book on bugs have the same weight as a book on the Holocaust. I know that's impossible, but I do know that we can apply weight to things. And I really like when things have a certain weight to them because they have more meaning. Yes. And so he actually wrote the most beautiful couple of pages that I are the most glowing things that I, I can imagine about the bugs. And it talks about how, how, how um, they go back into ancient Egypt about, you know, fanciful bugs and how if comedy is the most difficult to write, then whimsy is the most difficult of comedy. And these bugs are all whimsical. And so that's the way. And I, like I said, it's going to be really hard to compare that to that book, the, the first book I mentioned, but that's the, that's the power of the bugs in the process of writing. And as you write, you think and you learn and it helps you to grow. And for whatever silly reason, I decided to put a sponsorship page. And then I called around for sponsors and I called my friend, the insurance guy, Kyle. And I said, Kyle, would you like to be a sponsor? He says, Steve, I'll take 200 books. I was flabbergasted, <laughs> right? 200 books on the bugs. And, and so I was so flabbergasted that I called Jennifer, who's my friend, Jennifer Coolidge, who's been my friend for years and helped me establish a scholarship at University of Florida. She's currently working at the Orlando Symphony. She's amazing. In fundraising. Yeah, she is my biggest cheerleader. 
And I said, Jennifer, I'm bored. I want to have a show. Right. And so, and she knows I'm not bored, but she knows I also <laughs> want to have a show. And so she says, Steve, I want to do a show on the bugs. Like I had my idea what I wanted, but no, nope, we're doing a show on the bugs and that's the way it's going to be. And so now the bugs are eight and 10 feet tall in the Mills gallery. Wow. They're huge. I, um, I'm new. This is my first show in so many years. And so I used a wide format printer to make these giant things with the idea that if anybody wants something, we'll figure out what size and come back and make it the right size that they need, uh, which is not exactly the right plan <laughs> for a gallery. Galleries want to have, you know, things that can take off the wall and, and walk away. Right. With. Yeah. And so, so that makes it an exhibition instead of a gallery show. That's true. Yeah. I'm fascinated that, you know, Boris did not share much with me. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I wasn't sure where the conversation was going to go. I did know a little bit about bugs. I mean, I, I did know that, <laughs> at least that part. But just the sheer creativity, those are the kinds of things that I think um, really op open up the artists like you to the audience. And I think it's so amazing that you have so many different um, facets of who you are in the creative world. And that you look at things as creative, even that engineering, even that company business, you look at that from a creative perspective. And I think that that is, that must be an amazing thing to wake up every morning and to know that you're going to produce something creative. Because a lot of people get up and they don't. It could be years, it could be never where they're not fulfilling any of that creative creativity inside them. And you do it every single day. If I don't create anything, every day, then it's a wasted day. There's always something and not just one thing. I have at least 10 or 20 projects in in um, in the different states of completion. A do. painting, a master painting can take well over a year. OK, and so you can't you know, you, you, you it takes a long time. But this piece right behind me, yes, I, started, I started this piece last night for your show. This piece is the um, um, the Butler House and Hillsboro Beach, Florida, or Deerfield Beach, Florida. Excuse me. And believe it or not, I have two shows running at the same time. There's another show in South Florida for landscape art, and then on the on the 19th there'll be a third show back in Orlando on the art of music. And so each of these are completely different themes. And I have so much more work. I can have 10 more shows, all different themes. And so, so how, do we drive, how do we drive people to your show that ends this week? Um, Tell Mills them Gallery, time. six yes. to nine. Uh, uh, we're, have, we're bringing music from South Florida. We're going to try to have a little party. They were giving away a few of the posters. They're really cool. They'll be fun to do. Looking forward to meeting everybody, listening to your thoughts and comments and having a good time. So MillsGalleryOrlando.com is where you, where you can find, um, I can put you in touch. I encourage you all to go out. If you haven't been, first of all, to Mills Gallery, it's beautiful. Yeah. Um, but I'm excited to see big bugs. <laughs> um, I just find that so intriguing. And I think there's a kid in all of us that um, has had a fascination with bugs. So I think that's that would be an amazing show to go to six to nine. You're good. Six to nine uh, tonight and Thursday. Uh, six to eight. I know it's it's uh, there's out hours all day long. I mean, because it's a it's always open the gallery. Um, but the party's going to be six to nine on Thursday night. Perfect. The parties. But you can go to MillsGalleryOrlando.com. Uh, you can also go to Schusty's. Link tree, which is scrolling across there, and I'll put it in a clickable format in the comments below. When we finish the show, you can always reach out to me at thebogartexperience.com, uh, and I can get you in touch. I love everything about what you are and who you are, and I want you to come back on. I would be honored to have you come back on and talk you. about your writing, uh, your your other shows, your landscape, uh, how you can create a piece of art like that. Um, in, in an evening, uh, just to me, that's fascinating. I think it's fascinating and inspiring to anybody 
who has a love of the arts. Do you have a moment to understand how something like that's created? Yes, or we do. Are... No, no. I give you give give you time. You go okay, right ahead. Fine. Share. So I'll... you one of the things you said is you like to see how things are done. And so I have some uh, hard worn hard worn tricks that I've learned. And uh, so the first thing I did after retirement and during a pandemic was bought a little van to travel around the country and see things while we couldn't do, we were locked up. And, uh, and as a little gift, I bought some, uh, they're called Derwent Ink Tents pencils. They are highly, stat uh, the, they are highly saturated watercolor pencils, which in English means they're very colorful. However, they're very tricky because when you use them, they are very soft and subtle. And so if you go and you go and you see a vista, you see some beautiful mountains, you see whatever inspires you and you do your drawing, then later on when you're in the van, take a simple brush with water, just water, and wet what you made and it turns into a watercolor. And it's fun, it's, it's so much fun yeah. to, to do that. But that's not good enough because what that is is a watercolor. It's kind of sloppy, kind of organic, kind of not what I'm going for. I'm going for the look behind me, which is iconic. And so I would take these watercolors and I would cover them with a gouache, an opaque paint, so that you would get rid of all the noise and only get the shapes. Once you have the shapes, I put it into the iPad Pro and vectorize it, which means that I draw dots of all the shapes very quickly and then turn up the saturation and adjust all the colors and play around a little bit until it becomes like, wow, drop dead gorgeous. Once that's all done, then go back and paint it. Wow. Yeah. It wow. And I, 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 I will have to, I wish you would, we'll have to have you do that. Maybe we'll have you show us a little bit of that. Sure. Uh, on the in the books, you, the, in you the books, in the links, back. Um, there's a landscape book in the links and it explains the process. Love it. And then how, so the link tree is really the best way for people to find out more. And then we want you all to go to the show if you can make it today, but definitely the party is tomorrow night, six to nine at Mills Gallery, MillsGalleryOrlando.com if you want more information. I want y'all to go and follow Shusty, find him wherever he's at, we've, we've got all of his stuff and, and his links, but you can find it all at the link tree. I am a hundred percent sure. I love it. I, I am uh, lost track of time. So that is always a good thing uh, because I'm fascinated by your process and what you do and the amount of different uh, creative uh, flows that you have going on. Um, I think that's absolutely amazing. And I want people to get to know more about so go to the show, Mills Gallery, Orlando. Go to Schuster's link tree. And yes, he prefers Schuster. Um, I know that I, 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 I was going to ask that, and I saw it come up on your name right there. So I knew I was safe. What a joy to have you on, my friend. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. Here's a, right. here's a little teaser for you all. Let's see. It's taking a second to load. Uh, my iPad's been sitting here the whole oh. time. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's... Um, it's loading. I, you know, randomly, uh, I picked the biggest image on the whole file by mistake. So <laughs> it might not be. Right, that it's all right. Yeah. But people can find, I want people to research. Yeah. That's why I love Linktree so great. Because you're ah, here we go. All right, let's see. I'm going to take myself off, put you right there. Wow. There's an example. All of this is drawn by hand. There's. Un. Believable. Yeah. And there's hundreds and hundreds of I love the colors too. Yeah. Here's a beauty. Wow. That thing is 12 feet tall uh, at the gallery. No way. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. Well, I, I am very excited for you. It's an honor to have you on the show. You guys go to go to shoot these link tree or reach out to me or reach out to Mills Gallery. Thank you, my Thank friend, you. for coming on Thank the show. You. Thank you for what you do. You guys, you love the arts. You ask me all the time, are there any exhibits or shows? Well, we've got one Thursday night, this Thursday, 6 to 9 at Mills Gallery. Go to millsgalleryorlando.com. Find out more about Shusty. 
All right. I appreciate you. Thank you so much for sharing your journey with us. Thank you, everybody. All right.